You're very welcome to another episode of the Sporting Kingdom with myself, David Lehan, and as always, I'm joined in the studio by John O'Shea. John, how are you? Hi, hey, Dave. Thanks for having me as always. No problem. And uh, this week we're actually being recorded, so uh, hello to everyone out there who's watching us. Uh, right, uh, we have had a fairly active couple of weeks in the world of sport. I suppose we'll start off with uh, Leicester City. John? <sighs> I mean, it's, it's the combination of like... Um well, it's been a fairy tale sort of in eight or nine months yep. to be honest with you it's 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 been remarkable like, awards can't describe how great this achievement has been for the world of sport in general uh, it's probably up there for me it's probably the, the best achievement in the history of sport it's just remarkable how they've kind of consistently overcame the odds the whole season and just been so consistent the whole way through Um. It, it really is a great story and it, it was it was hard not to get caught up in the excitement of the whole thing and um, on Monday night when they were um, officially crowned champions thanks to Chelsea doing them a favour by drawing yeah. with Tottenham. It's it's a great story for and there's so many different levels really. Um, just like the players, most of them have never the, the highest, like for the vast majority of them, the, the highest honour they've ever won would have been the English Championship that they won two years ago when they got promoted to the Premier League in 2014. Um, there was one, I think there was only one guy, I think Wesselski, who won something with um, in the Belgian league at um, Anderlecht. But for for the vast majority of them, it, it, I, I mean, it's, it's a great story. A lot of them kind of have come from second level clubs like N'Golo Kante, Rio Mares, and J- Jamie Verdi, of course. They, it, it was, it's their first, I mean, just to compete in the Premier League it it would have been a good season for Leicester, but to win it is just out of this world. And if you look at a few of the players in the squad, I'll go through a few of them there. Um, so the stories are just remarkable. Um, obviously, Casper Schmeichel in goals. He's um the son of Peter Schmeichel, and he he's always kind of people are just kind of you're, you're just famous for being Peter Schmeichel's son. Yeah. And uh, even any one time a person actually said it to he went up to him. A, a, a member of the fan went up to himself and Peter like when they rode for when he was up with the, the Schmeichel family for dinner and um, he would say oh, like, oh you're a good keeper but you'll never be as good as your father and Peter Schmeichel just kind of lost it completely um, he was like oh, he's as good just as good if not better than me and I think he's, he's proven it this season no he's yeah. been outstanding and you know he, he really he's kind of come up with the father shadow and he's really kind of made a name for himself this year and incidentally as well he's actually Peter Schmeichel, the first time he won the Premier League, of all the ones he won at United, the first one he won, he was 29 years old, so who knows, maybe it might be the first of me for Casper, we'll wait and see. Um, yeah. Obviously, N'Golo Kante, well, that's another great story. It's he, what a, It just shows you what scouting can do. To find someone like him, you know, he was the highest like level, he was he was playing in Ligue 2, the second level in France, and they kind of spot, they identified him over a period of time, the, list, the scouting system, they made a move for him, and he's been a breath of fresh air. He he just runs himself into the ground every single game. The amount of effort he puts into the, it's just unbelievable. Really, it's remarkable. Um. Obviously, Maris as well is another great story yeah. from France. Um. And, and actually, a good one here. Him, he was turned down by um Saint Mirren in Scotland. He went on trial there, but they didn't like what they saw. Like they didn't offer him a contract. So like he's kind of proven them wrong in a way, <laughs> you know. It, it, uh, I suppose Saint Mirren's last was Leicester's gain in the long run, um, and of course finally just on the well, we're on top of the players, uh, Jamie Vardy, what a story he is, like you know, if if anyone's like the poster boy in terms of the players, it has to be him. Do you know as recently as 2012 he was playing in um, non-league football with uh, Fleetwood Town, but like he's can't like. This is a guy you now at fifteen years of age. He was turned away from um, Sheffield Wednesday. They, they, they thought he wasn't good enough. But it, his story just gives so much inspiration for for young fellas out there. If you get turned down by a football club, it's not the end of the world. Like he was twenty three, twenty four. He was playing in like the fifth, sixth, seventh tier of English football. So it just shows you hard work and a bit of commitment. It can it, you can be rewarded, and it's never. It just shows you it's, it's never too late to achieve your dreams which Jamie Vardy most certainly did um, on Sunday like if you told him three or four years ago he'd win the league if he said that I'd be a Premier League winner's medal 
people might have probably thought he was on drugs or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, are you all right, Jamie? Yeah, like, but like, it's 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 unbelievable, really. And this fight, that obviously as well. Well, um, uh, what's called your Ranieri, the manager. Yeah. What a humble guy. What a lovely guy. Um, what a story. He they people were saying he he was going to be the fear to be fired first. That's after his disastrous spin in Greece. But you know, he's come on and he's proven people wrong as well. And he, 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 along with all the players, it's just been remarkable what they've done there. Yeah, I think it's always fantastic fantastic to see the underdogs winning, to be fair, in no matter what sport it is. Um, anyway, how do you think they'll do in the Champions League next year? Uh, it, it'll be good to see them in it, but like, do you think they'll put it up to the teams in Europe, like the likes of Barcelona or Paris Saint-Germain or any of them teams? I know, I know that they won't have to play them, but like, do you think they'll get further in the championship than the likes of them? Um, I do, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, I mean, like, if they if they have the attitude that they went in the league this year, um, who knows? Like, anything is possible, really. You know, yeah. Like, they're going to have, have the same attitude going to the Europe, the excitement and all that comes with it. Maybe the pressure. There'll be no pressure on them because um. You know, people aren't maybe going to be expecting a whole lot, maybe from them on the European scale. It's new territory for them, so they have nothing to look like to be going up against the likes of Bayern Munich and all these teams who they could face, who would be targeting to win it. But it, if I was Leicester, I just could have keep the safe approach, just keep playing free, th- just go out and join themselves every single week because who knows? This might be the one season that these fellas ever play in the Champions League. Who knows? They might as well just go out and just enjoy every single second of it. Um, and another point actually as well, just about the the whole Leicester fairy tale, it gives hope to everyone in in sport now really or in football. You know, everyone that all the clubs in England and even around around the world. You know, especially well, just looking at the England like the likes of Burnley, all these small th- the, the clubs kind of who would have much smaller budgets than the likes of Manchester United, Man City, Chelsea. It gives them the belief, you know, it can be done, you know, what nothing is impossible anymore. You know, I think after this season, all predictions go to window, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well it just shows you that uh, someone can come out of the hat, you know. And it might be done it might be done every single year. But it just shows you know it, it, they, these kind of clubs can if they can take on the big boys then who know? I I think that only I think that we 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 could see more and more of these stories over the years to come. Okay. So, yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, I suppose we'll come a bit closer to home now. We'll uh, talk about the Alliance League in Ireland at uh, final between Kerry and Dublin. Fantastic game. It was. It was a, a good. I mean, it was. It was. It felt like a championship game watching it. With yeah. A massive crowd there. It was played at a good intensity. Um. I think. It was a reality check, I think, probably more than anything for the the state of the game at the moment in the country. Um, I suppose, especially from a Kerry perspective, really, um, it just shows you that um, probably that they're a bit off the pace compared to Dublin at the moment. But yeah. that's probably nothing to be ashamed of because most counties in Ireland are probably off the pace compared to Dublin. Um, it was just like an <coughs> so many different. I think outset and so many different levels. Um, if it was just like Dublin were just in control of the match, and it just sort of shows how far Dublin are ahead of the rest in terms of their pace, their preparation, and just their footballing ability. Um, I don't know. They have really, uh, from a Kerry point of view, um, do you know they they probably thought they had fast players, but I saw they're nowhere near as fast. That those players will be considered no near as fast for the Dublin style of play. Chile, like you, I suppose Dublin really they could put out a, a second team. Yeah. And if Dublin A versus Dublin B, they probably both get to the All Ireland final. The strength and depth that they have is just crazy. Yeah. <coughs> I just thought be the game the way it was going. I felt as well the way that just uh from care I do, I don't know maybe going into August if they're to play in the championship. I thought Kerry would, would have been one of the main teams to challenge Dublin, but looking back at it now, if they were to play in the All Ireland semi final, the final, you know, I, it's only a few months. It only be a few months down the line. You'd have to like. I think the gap now would be like Dublin would be even bigger favourites if they were yeah. to play in um 
I know, I know, in the semi final or final. I think what the, the whole weekend kind of proved to me over the league finals was that I think Tyrone could. I, I think if they could be a serious out, they're one team to watch this year. And they could rattle the big boys, though, the likes of Dublin, even, and Kerry. Um, so they're, they're, if they can find a bit more ruthless, like they've been impressive in the league campaign. But if they're more ruthless in front of goal come championship time, I think there's no reason why they can't be competing um, for, amongst the, like, for the All Ireland, even. They, they, they can't be considered contenders. So uh, last year in the semi final, they played um, Kerry. Yeah. And they probably they, they had chances to beat them as well, but they just they didn't take their goal chances on the day. Um, but I think this year, the, 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 there's something about I like to look at Tyrone this year, what I've seen them. They look like they look even more improved than last year. The the way that they they move on the counter very quickly. Um, Tier and McCann, Hart, you know, they have some great players in the squad, and um, you know it's hard to, it's hard to see anyone stopping Dublin. But if there's anyone going to do it, I think Dublin or Tyrone could give them a run for the money. Yeah, uh, one one team now that won't be uh, that won't be stopping <laughs> kind of anyone this year. I think would probably be the uh, Kilkenny minor footballers. What do you think? Uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of grim even this from when when I saw the result coming in or if you're reading about the paper yeah it is fairly grim really just the even as a Cork man reading it like you know you know when when you have a Cork man laughing at something like that you know it's bad oh my god you know it's for this, that's not what you want in a game you want to see teams competitive in every single game yeah um I think like I think it got to the stage in the game as well the Wexford manager the minor who he was saying after. He was telling his lads just to start knocking over the bear, you know, mm-hmm. stop going for goals, kind of just to. But they didn't. They stop. got nothing. No, I mean, I'm out. I'm on about um, Wexford. Oh, they, Wexford, yeah, sorry. Knock, he was telling him to knock more of them over the bear. Yeah, just yeah. The, the sympathy. Um, I just think like, it's just the attitude down there. Is, it's just like they just don't have an attitude towards us. That's the, that seems to be the problem. Uh, there's no structure in place for football and it's been that way for a long time down there. Mm-hmm. It's been the poor relation. And it's kind of sad really. Do you know, I think there's no reason why, in my opinion, why teams can't be competitive at both. Even with limited resources, I mean, like there's, back in Cork, um, the county championship, like where I'm from, they played uh, Noosestown or they won the intermediate hurling championship last year and they're in the senior grade this year. And that at the same time they're senior football, they're in the senior football grade, so they're a dual senior club. Yeah. And this is just like for a village of maybe, I'd say, it ha- there, there's no more than a thousand people there, and so a lot of the players are playing for uh, both sides, you know. So like the training is tailored one week to play football, depending on who's playing what in terms of games. Yeah. And then if there's a championship game in the hurling the following week, they'd focus more on the hurling. Do you know? The show if, if structures and if there's if if there's a willingness for it to be done and if people can uh, c- create a structure and if the players are there and if they all come together, don't know there's no reason why people can't be competitive in both sports. Um, I think none more so than um what we, we discovered recently down here in Kerry with the um with the Kerry senior hurling team. Yeah. Do you know for a county that's rich in football heritage. They're, re- they're getting more and more rec- the hurlers now the people are taking them seriously and they're, they're getting recognition and, they're, and they, they could have a great year this year really just keep an eye out for them uh, but it's just like to overall there's just no reason why I think you can't be competitive with both really. that's what I'm trying to say yeah okay well um, it's been good talking to you John and uh, unfortunately time is against us thanks for coming on to the show again and uh, of course thanks to John Royal as well who is has been recording us for the uh, past while and uh, yeah so thanks for that and uh, I hope you all enjoyed the show all of you who are watching in in IT truly uh, so uh, goodbye for now